Hi, and welcome to Mods. We're keeping you connected to inspiring science with virtual camp discovery brought to you by Citrix, the museum's official innovation partner. Step into the shoes of an early paleontologist for Expedition Dinosaur. Presented by Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital at Mods. This traveling exhibit roars with animatronic life-size dinos. Let's stomp on over for an adventure. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna talk dinosaurs. Now I know dinosaurs aren't really walking around anymore, unless you get very specific and you talk about like cockroaches, alligators, sharks, but we're talking these big guys. So I hope you're excited to walk through our exhibit and learn all about them. So as we tour around this exhibit, we're actually gonna start with the classic dinosaurs, which are actually the ones I grew up with. Oh my gosh, what's going on, Sean? What is, what is this? Well, Michael, this dinosaur is one of the most famous of them all. It's called Triceratops, the one that fought, lived and fought alongside Tyrannosaurus rex. And these are, this is the one that you always see depicted in the pictures with the T-Rex going after it, yep. right? You see, scientists used to think that Triceratops and its relatives, the other horned dinosaurs, or ceratopsians, used their horns and neck frills as weapons against predators, but we now believe that wasn't the case. They were actually very delicate and were probably used mainly for showing off. Kind of like how some birds today have colorful feathers. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, what about this dinosaur right here? What is, what is this? Well, this is a dinosaur most people probably never heard of, but we actually know a lot about. It's called Carnotaurus. It lived in South America. Is it like a Tyrannosaurus? Not really. Okay. They're, they were both meat-eating dinosaurs, but they belong to very different groups of meat-eating dinosaurs. And what, why all the spikes and, and horns and stuff? Well, the spikes, believe it or not, that was actually really lucky. When this dinosaur was first discovered in 1984, the fossil was so well preserved, we actually found skin impressions in the rock around it. So while we don't know the color of this dinosaur's skin, we do know the texture. As for the horns on its head, we don't really know what they were for. Maybe they were used as weapons in hunting prey, or maybe they were used mainly to, again, show off. We just aren't sure. Okay. Oh my gosh. Is that, is that a velociraptor? Yes, it is. And as you can tell, it looks quite a bit different than the ones you see in Jurassic Park. This is actually much more realistic. They had feathers? Yep. Wow, Why did, uh, can you tell me about them? Well, in real life, Velociraptor was much smaller than it was in the movies, only about three feet tall. But there were many other species of raptors, or dromaeosaurs, and some of them were about five to six feet tall. As for the feathers, in 2007, a paleontologist took a close look at the fossils of Velociraptor and realized that its arm bones had these little bumps on them, and they're called quill knobs. Quill knobs are what allow feathers to attach, which proves that this dinosaur and many of its cousins, if not all of them, were covered in feathers. Oh, that's and kind of like the birds we have today, they would have those quill knobs, right? Well, not all birds have quill knobs on their bones, but most of them do. And I'm looking at their teeth and I can see like very sharp teeth here and I saw sharp teeth on our last dinosaur. What, what can I tell by looking at their teeth? Well, that shows that they're carnivores. Those sharp teeth are good for slicing off meat. And are there any dinosaurs that ate both meat and plants? Oh yes, quite a few actually. In fact, one of them lived in the same place and time as Velociraptor. It was called Oviraptor. But don't let us name fool you, it was not related to Velociraptor. It looked very different. It had a big beak for a mouth, and we're pretty sure this dinosaur was a, both a, a plant eater and a meat eater, an omnivore. Okay. What? Oh my gosh, there's another big dinosaur right here. What is this? This dinosaur is called Albertosaurus. It gets its name because it lived in Alberta, Canada. It looks a lot like T-Rex, doesn't it? So wait, 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 because it was found in Alberta, it's named an Albertosaurus? Yes, a lot of ant living things, whether they're alive today or extinct, their scientific name usually tells us something about them. It makes it easier for scientists to understand what this plant or animal or other living thing was like. So if I found a dinosaur, I could name it a Michaelosaurus? Well, apparently you're not allowed to name a new species after yourself, but you could name it after someone you really admired. Oh, maybe a Shaunosaurus. <laughs> That'd be nice, thank you. So this is a really big dinosaur. Um, and how big did this guy grow? About 30 feet long. Okay. Yep. And what was their top speed? Like I watch a movie and I can see them like really moving really fast, but did they really move fast or were they solitary hunters? Well, 
Albertosaurus is not only is it a bit smaller than its bigger cousin T. Rex, it's also a bit skinnier, so it could probably run faster. But the exact speed, I would know. Okay, perfect. As and for um, whether hunted in groups or not, or alone, scientists have found skeletons of many different Albertosaurs of different ages living to, or at least dying together, which suggests that maybe they did live in groups and hunt in packs like wolves. But we're just not sure. As we're walking through, I'm just kind of flashing back to movies I watched as a kid. I'm seeing these these two guys right here. And I remember just them absolutely crashing into a car in the movie I watched. What can you tell me about these guys? Well, these dinosaurs, they're called Pachycephalosaurus. The name means thick-headed lizard. And it's actually a very good name because that skull I was about eight to nine inches of solid bone before you hit, get to the brain case. So if I called somebody a Pachycephalosaur, would that be an insult? Maybe. <laughs> We used to think these dinosaurs would butt heads, kind of like bighorn sheep do today. But in the last few years, a lot of scientists have actually begun to doubt that. As thick as that skull was, the bone was actually pretty delicate. Okay. If they were to crash into each other, they might actually hurt each other. So we now think maybe they were using it to show off. Is this... Is this a Stegosaurus? It's my favorite dinosaur! Well, it's actually pretty close. This dinosaur is called Kentrosaurus, and it was actually a close cousin of Stegosaurus. But it didn't, it wasn't around the same time as a Stegosaurus. Actually, it was around the same time, but it lived in a different part of the world. Stegosaurus lived in North America. Kentrosaurus here lived in Africa. And how do you know that? Because we've actually found fossils of them. Gotcha. We also know that the Earth's continents were actually a lot closer together then than they are now, so even though these guys lived on different continents, they still may, just may, have actually met at some point. Wow, these are so cool. Well, thank you, Sean, so much. I had an absolute great time learning about the dinosaurs here. I hope you did too, and we hope to see you here at the museum, and we'll catch you next time on the YouTube channel. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Virtual Camp Discovery. Special thanks to Citrix, Mod's official innovation partner for powering this series. Please stay safe and connected with mods by visiting our social channels at MODSFTL.